Lovely Timbers. Ahoy, me hearties. Welcome to another adventure on the high sea called the Big Bang. On the show today, we'll be making music with pigs. That's music. We'll be showing you how to make a ship that sails through the air. And we'll be finding out what this guy ate for his dinner in the strange but true story of X-rays. But first, a trick. Violet, can you spin this thing for me? Clockwise. The other way? Yep. No problem. Watch this. Oh, well done. You've done that. Yes. Good spin for you. Oh, hang on a minute. No, you haven't. It stopped. Violet, now it's going the other way. Hey, how does that work? Well, it's called a kelt or a rattleback, and I'll explain. You can actually make one from uh, a ruler with a piece of plasticine and a dessert spoon, a plastic dessert spoon underneath. And uh, they will only spin in one direction. You spin it in the other direction, and the rotational motion, the spin, is turned into a rocking motion, which stops the thing and then starts it spinning back around the other way. And the reason it does this is that this thing is carved in a similar sort of shape to the position of this spoon on the underside of this ruler. See how that spoon is sort of twisted around that way? Mm -hmm. That's the thing that makes both of these rattlebacks. Very clever. But I've now got a turning trick for you. OK. OK, a ping-pong ball with an eye on it. Can you place it on the table so that it stays with the eyeball pointing upwards? Well, yeah, I guess I probably could. Nah, I don't think I'm going to be able to, am I? Look, it's weighted so the eyeball points down. Well, it can be done. There's a trick to it. And I'll show you how it's done at the end of the programme. ha ha me hearties! Welcome aboard the good ship of Captain Nobeard. Prepare to set sail across sea and sky. ha 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 <laughs> Excuse me. Now, all good pirates need a ship, and how about that for a pirate ship? Now, this pirate ship is unique. It sails in a way that no other pirate ship has sailed before. Easy to make. This is how you do it. Now, you'll need to start off by lifting your eye patch so you can see what you're doing, and then drawing an outline of half a pirate ship on a piece of card, a sort of ship shape, if you get my drift. Now, when you cut it out, you'll find that you have cut out an entire ship shape. Two things you need to remember. One, a couple of tabs at the back to glue the thing together. And two, a hole in the bottom for your mast to go through. The mast is nothing more than a kebab skewer, a wooden skewer with a drinking straw taped in position about a third of the way up. Then, stick your mast through your completed boat and tape it in position. It goes through the hole there. Then, with a cork, bung that on the end. Now, this is going to be a counterbalance. Why you need a counterbalance on a ship, I'll explain presently. Next thing you need to do is to add the mainsail. Ha 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 ha! The sail. Now, the mainsail is a piece of card with a tiny hole cut in the top and in the bottom. Now, you push those two holes together so they line up and pop that over your mast your uh, wooden skewer, and oh, your ship is almost ready to sail. There's two more things you need to do, and they are add some plasticine to your cork so you've got a real counterbalance, and decorate your ship so it looks like a proper pirate ship with a stripe on the sail, and of course, a Jolly Roger. <laughs> That's a fine looking vessel, but it won't float. Oh, it doesn't have to float. This one sails on the eighth sea. Shouldn't that be seven seas? No, the eighth sea, it flies. I better explain. What you need is some strimmer line, right? Or even just some fishing line. And tie it across your living room really tight and then thread your pirate ship onto the line. Thank you very much. Now, you just pass the line through the straw, through the but centre of the hole. Right, pull that tight. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tie that off nice and tight for me? Yes. And you can see that this is what the counterbalance was all about. That weight below keeps the pirate ship balanced like that. And, Violet, I've plundered the high seas to find a suitable vessel for you. <laughs> Look, there's a Viking ship, so go over there, and if you go to sail a Viking ship... I think you ought to look like a Viking. Oh, wonderful. Now, you'll need some wind, and here's your wind generator. You look great. <laughs> it's just a piece of card, really, and what you do is you just fan it behind your ship. Right, I'll race you to the other side of the room. OK. I, Viking Violet, challenge you, Captain Nobeard, to a race. Ha, 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 ha! 
All right, then. The winner gets uh, pieces of eight and the loser has to walk the plank. And go! Ah, come on, me asses! And the wind's looking good. I'm away with the wind, no. It's only in a gentle moment. I'm going to get there, big boy. Come on, I'm stuck it up. Come on! See you! See you! I'm the winner. Where's me pieces of eight? And I've got to walk the plank. Fun, fun, fun. These toys are a bit batty, but they're not as tricky as the yo-yo. Do you know the right way to flick your yo-yo? Keep your palm facing upwards and flick your wrist. When you reach the bottom, flick that wrist again and back it comes. Clever? Absolutely. It's using its spinning energy to climb back up the string. Practice makes perfect, Cynthia. What about flying fun? William Frisbee was a baker. He got his customers in a spin with his pie tins. Hey, maybe this will catch on. Can you put a name to this toy? Enro Rubik was crazy, crazy, crazy. He wanted to make a cube of 26 blocks, and each block had to be able to move around. Why? He was interested in mathematics, that's why. When he mixed up the colours, it took him a whole month to sort out the mess. The rest is history. The world record for sorting out Mr. Rubik's Cube is just 17 seconds. And no one has managed it in less than 52 moves. Here's one solution. Rotate the axis through the parallel arc in the fifth dimension. Then maneuver the cube anti-clockwise so the face on the southwest side is now pointing towards the North Polar region. It's easy when you know how. Hey, chick, chick, chick. Hey, chick, 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 chick. Violet? There ain't nobody here but us chickens. There ain't nobody here at all. <laughs> What's that? It's my clucker. I beg your pardon? Look, I'll explain later. You go and get changed and get the big pig from the back garden. The big pig. Cluckers are really easy to make. You just tie a bit of fishing line to the bottom of a yoghurt pot. And there's your clucker. Actually, there are loads of other really great musical instruments you can make yourself. This one is a berin bow. It's normally made from a seed pod and an archery bow, but this one's made from a yoghurt pot, some garden cane and some fishing line. You just put it against your body and hold it there and then hit the fishing line with the garden cane and you get different sounds as the yoghurt pot moves away and towards your body. But my favourite is this. It looks like a pig, but it's called a queeker. Here's the sound it makes. An oik. I'll show you how to make one. You need a crisp tube and cut the end off there and take the lid off and then take a balloon and cut the end of the balloon and a straw, glue the straw to the top of the balloon and then turn the balloon inside out when it's glued there like that and tie fishing line round the other side to really secure it. When you've got that, just open out the balloon and pull it across the top of the crisp tube and you've got your basic queeker. The rest is just decoration with pink card. You make the sound by really damping your fingers, getting really wet, and then they'll slip and stick on the tube. The pitch depends on the size of the balloon and the tube. The bigger the tube and the looser the balloon, the deeper the sound. Oink! Violet, what Karen, on... you're not changed! It's time for the concert! Come on! Thank <laughs> you. 
true story of a man who took photographs. Smile! But these were no ordinary photographs. His camera could see through things. He could even see inside people. Did you have a veggie burger with fries and special sauce for lunch? This is the strange but true story of Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen and the discovery of the X-ray. Röntgen lived in Germany over a hundred years ago and he was fascinated by electricity. He used to mess about with one of these. It's a cathode ray tube. You know, whack some electricity in one side and as the electricity passes through the gases on the inside of the tube it creates cathode rays and those rays make the glass of the tube glow in the dark. A bit like one of those scary glow-in-the-dark masks. <laughs> <clears throat> Röntgen had an idea. He thought the cathode rays might be able to pass through the glass and make things glow outside the tube. To test his theory, he popped some black cardboard over the cathode ray tube so that no light could escape from the electric sparks. And then he made the room dark and switched on. So far, so good. There was no light escaping from the tube. But then he noticed something odd. A piece of paper on the work table was glittering away as if it were being hit by a ray of sunshine. Aww. On the piece of paper was the letter A, written in a fluorescent liquid which glowed in the dark when hit by the rays. What Röntgen wanted to know was, what was the rays which were causing the letter to glow? It couldn't be cathode rays, because the cathode ray tube was far too far away from the piece of paper. It had to be some other kind of ray, a ray that could pass through the glass and the black paper and then travel invisibly through the air. Röntgen had discovered X-rays. And he called them X-rays because he didn't know what else to call them. For the first time, doctors could look inside a living body without cutting it open, which hurts a bit. A reporter wrote... By putting my hand between the source of the rays and a piece of luminescent cardboard, I saw the bones of my living hand. Within a year, hospitals all over the world were using X-ray machines to find out what was wrong with their patients. And it was all down to Röntgen and his faithful assistant, Mr Charles Newtonangel. <laughs> now that's strange. But true! Violet, show us your wobbly table tennis ball. OK, get ready to wobble. You were right earlier when you said I'd weighted it, cos I turned it upside down, put a few pinpricks in the top here and then half filled it with water, popped it in the freezer and now I've got ice halfway round. Oh. So it's weighted so it will never look up. The eyeball will always look down. So how do you get it to stand upright? Well, you simply, watch this, spin it. Oh, yeah, look, 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 it's looking up. What's happening there, then? Well, a spinning ping-pong ball will always want to spin as fast as it can. And this means keeping the weight dead central. But with the wobbly ping-pong ball, the weight gets flung out to the sides. And the only way it can get the weight central is to turn the other way up. Curses! Foiled again by me old adversary. Gareth, what are pieces of eight anyway? Well, I think it's a binary definition of pieces of 16 that's subdivided into two. There's lots more tricks and makes in the Big Bang book. Out now.